welcome everybody it is day 28 of my daily vlog challenge i can't believe uh, we are racing towards the end now and um i hope you've all enjoyed uh, journeying with me so far um a bit of a mixed bag of content to say the least um i was hoping to get out just that little bit more but i think the reality is probably a couple of times a week is is what I'm looking at and, and I always have done for the past few months of why on earth I thought I could just get outside every day um was a little bit ambitious um however there's still quite a lot of fun that we've had indoors and I've proper dressed up today um for the theme um so we're all uh, going to be getting some really nice hot weather over the coming few days. Um, it's even a hot day today. It was lovely this morning, just looking out the window, seeing all the sunshine and blue sky and all the reflection of the sunrise on the leaves of the trees. It was lovely. It's a shame that I don't actually have a garden to be able to go and enjoy it, but... Um, Yes, we are indoors today. The reality is I could film this outside, but I'd be on a pavement or I would be in a car park. <laughs> and it's, to be honest, I feel a lot happier in here uh, filming rather than in that environment. So yes, I don't have a garden and getting to a green space is just that little bit further than what I'm capable of at the minute. So dressing up with a hat and glasses is, is what we're gonna get today. Um, so I thought today we could talk about some of the issues around spending time in pretty hot weather and what that can do to our bodies and how we can manage some of that risk. Um, we do have some really nice hot weather, so now is a good a time as any to talk about this topic and it's something that impacts me quite a lot because since I've had ME and fibromyalgia my temperature regulation has gone a little bit awry and so I just have to be really on it when it comes to managing temperature issues. So perhaps it might be helpful to talk about um, what actually it looks like when maybe you've got a body that just doesn't like um, temperature, high temperatures and um, perhaps you might be having the symptoms of heat exhaustion or heat stroke and what potentially you want to be doing about it. So I know that I've started to have heat, exhaust heat exhaustion um, on previous trips, even ones that I videoed, I look back and go, oh you were slurring your words Helen in that video and just can tell and I can tell when I'm in the in the situation I'm not doing so great here um and I've mentioned slurring words that's definitely one symptom that is a is a sure sign it's not just that I'm getting tongue-tied which I sometimes can you've noticed that in some of the videos that I do I've done this last month sometimes I just catch my words a little bit and not sure I have to rethink what I'm saying um but the actual slurring of words is is something that that happens generally when I'm heat, got heat exhaustion and feeling dizzy, feeling nauseated, not wanting to drink, um, maybe being more clumsy, not being able to, to function and do things um, coherently, basically behaving like you're a bit drunk, um, mood changes. Um, they can all be indicators that your body is just a bit like, not enjoying this um, hot weather. Um, and in those situations you do just want to get out of the environment that's put you in that position so ideally in the shade having a hat on having sunglasses to protect your eyes um, having good sun cream making sure you're well hydrated um, yeah I think if you're not sweating if you've got palpitations if you really are not functioning well and when I what I mean by that is if if you're not able to call for help for example because you don't think you can manage your phone that's a sure indicator that you probably need more help than just self-help um potentially going into sunstroke because it, people who do get heat stroke um it is a medical and emergency and it's you it's hard to f for you to just be able to get yourself into a better position in that scenario the things that I've just talked about are all things that will help um, improve the situation. I think once you've gone into heat stroke, sunstroke, whatever you want to call it, um, 
it can be quite hard for you to then self-manage that because you're so far gone, if that makes sense. Um, so I've talked a little about the, about the external environment and I, that's what's caused the issue in most cases, isn't it? You've been outside, you've been exposed to this hot weather, either the sun's been blasting on you or you're just too hot. Um, so the way that you can cool down is obvious things that like I always carry this little bottle with me on hot weather because I find for the t for the little bit of water that you've got in here the the, the um, relief that you get from this on a hot day is actually quite good whereas it can be tempted to want to throw a whole load of water over you that you've got in a water bottle and if you're on a long walk you don't want to be throwing all the water um, that you want to be drinking over your body I don't feel that that's a good use of your resources you will need to keep hydrated um you're not going to necessarily keep um it won't cool you down um drinking water but it will keep you hydrated and that's an important mechanism that you need normally i work in a and &E, and one of the things that we're normally focusing on is the making the external environment cooler than what someone's body temperature is basically and making sure that um you've got that cool environment it's not necessarily what you what's inside you the only time that i've ever seen somebody have for example an internal mechanism of keeping cool is so i might have some fluids that have been cooled down or it's the same if um uh if someone's too cold you might have an intravenous fluids that have been warmed up because then the blood itself is then um, being warmed up. So that that is a very internal thing that you're not going to get sat in a f on the edge of a field from mountain rescue. That is something you would have in hospital. It's very rare because I, I've not very rarely seen that kind of intervention just because most of the time the causes the external environment and so if you change the external environment you've you've pretty much solved the issue and the body can then regulate itself and sort itself out you might just give some helping hands like with them things that i've told with the water or with your hat or the shade you know all those kind of self-management things um so just as an overarching thing to think about it is i think um approaching it as a changing the environment then you're in if you're starting to suffer is quite helpful and also being objective so i take a thermometer with me because i know that my body is a bit of a diva um this has helped me be quite objective both in hot and cold weather because there have been times when i've had hypothermia and um what what constitutes hypothermia is 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 debatable in terms of the actual temperature that you're reading but at the end of the day if, if you're <laughs> for example if my body temperature was reading over 37.5 i know for a fact that um, and that's degrees 37 and a half degrees i know that that's my body is getting a bit warm uh, because my temperature is never that my temperature is about 36.5 quite consistently so as soon as i start to go a degree higher i'm like oh my body's a bit warmer if i start to go to 38 I know that that's not normal. I know that that's my body starting to go. That is not great. And I'll, that's great because it's objective. If I'm feeling hot and bothered and I'm feeling a bit unwell, but my temperature's okay, what that tells me is my body's actually managing the situation. I'm just having symptoms of my body managing that situation. And whilst that's unpleasant and there's things I can do about it, it is not a necessary me medical emergency i'm not going to necessarily need to go oh i feel rough therefore i must um call for help i think i know that my body is a bit sensitive and so it's helpful to be a little bit objective and go oh that i feel unwell right now just because i'm hot and bothered and i just need to employ some of these other um things so I thought we could have a brief look at some of the things that I would advise not doing. So if you're near a body of water and you just think, oh, I'm so hot, I'm just going to go dive straight in. Um, there's just some potential issues with that that are quite serious. Um, one, you don't know what you're diving into really. If 
there's been some warmer weather recently and it's been obviously wet then you might get more weed growth and undergrowth that you won't necessarily see on the surface so you go jumping in get stuck in a load of weeds and then you drown that's not a great way to go and so i would just be wary especially on your own um just saying oh i'm hot i'm gonna go and jump in that lake or that river um there are just hidden dangers um when you start going wild swimming um however there are still ways that you can use that water body to keep you cool so i think dipping your toes in and maybe standing in the water for for 10 15 minutes actually might be quite a nice idea because again you're wanting to make that uh, your surroundings cooler um but just bear in mind that cold wa water shock still happens to people even in hot weather because it's still a environment that's colder than your body temperature and if you think your body temperature is 37 and you're trying to make sure that your body's at that temperature anything that you're in that's colder than that your body's actually having to do some kind of work to maintain that body temperature and you start swimming around in I don't know 10 degree water on a hot day you suddenly get that shock um you still can get quite poorly um from that temperature difference and especially if you've got health conditions i just don't think you want to be putting your body through that shock it's not necessarily the i don't know the exposure to a colder temperature because people go in their shower and have cold showers won't they um there are ways that you can do there's benefits of having cold water around you but in a, in a situation where you're just feeling hot and bothered and you're starting to see maybe some signs that um, your body's not coping very well and you've got health conditions I think just jumping into a lake is is just asking for trouble because you've got the risk of the environment risk of getting stuck in a lake because there's weeds and stuff you've got the cold water shock um you don't want to be causing further problems than you already have but you can use that water body definitely get your hat and throw a load of water over your head brilliant you know, you're, not, you're less likely to cause full over body shock, cold water shock from that. Um, and you'll feel, you'll feel it. Um, but just, yeah, try and use the water that you're carrying with you for hydrating if possible rather than um, throwing it all over you unless you know that you're definitely going to be able to get water in a short amount of time moving forward if you're on a walk. Say, you know, it'd be different if um, I had a whole load of, you know, a litre of water and I knew that I was you know 100 meters from a tap or a cafe or somewhere that's quite different but if you're in the middle of nowhere and you've got your water and you're feeling hot and you're tempted to throw it over yourself just maybe have something like this where you just get that little bit of relief um yeah but yeah i, w I wouldn't be um jumping into lakes and i'd make sure i'm managing my water consumption very well um so i thought i would end with some of the um stuff that I might think moving forward about what I might take with me on a trip or some of um, my thoughts as I'm learning more about how my body copes with heat um, in general but also coldness and just temperature as a whole because um, there are products that might be able to help um, I mean obviously wearing a hat um, some glasses sun cream lots of water taking all the usual stuff but I'm thinking about for example um, perhaps getting a little umbrella um, hiking umbrella you can see some of those um, or a multi-use tarp poncho thing I've seen a couple that um, transform into a bivy you can change them into a tarp you can make them into a little poncho so it, it's very multifunctional and I think it would be really handy for managing any potential smaller emergencies that I might have. For example, if I was to have a seizure in the middle of an open moorland on a hot day, um, one of these poncho things, they have a reflective um, inner and so you could flip it over and have make yourself a little shelter um, to recover in. For example, if you needed to have a rest for whatever reason, emergency or not, you've got this... Um, this tarp that you could put up uh, using your walking poles um, and some multi-use products like that might be quite useful because then obviously if it's in one of and it's raining really hard and I just need a bit of relief from the weather you've got a product like that that might be quite multifunctional so 
there are things that you can definitely think of in addition um and as i say for me i take a thermometer just to be a little bit objective i wouldn't say I rely on this um conclusively at the end of the day if i'm having symptoms of heat stroke or um heat exhaustion that just um and my temperature's f normal i still feel like you still want to be thinking about getting some help or changing the situation i i would have alarm bells ringing even if my temperature was reading normal just because um and and also just because it's like one or two two point degrees let's say it went from 37 to 37.2 like i'm not micromanaging i'm not looking at um oh you know this it went up by 0.2 because it's going to be variable i understand how to use this basically i understand that if you really want an accurate temperature of your body different ways of measuring temperature will be more accurate than others so this is more of just of a guide it's more just to go yep you really are struggling here nope your body is in homeostasis whatever that word is and although it's horrible it is it is what it is so you can use something like this definitely um but it's knowing what you're going to do with that information once you know it if that makes sense and because i work in healthcare i kind of know when to go now we're all right this is just not very nice or yet yeah, time to actually do something about this um I hope that's been helpful. I hope we all get to enjoy this nice weather. Make sure you take a hat. Make sure you take some sunscreen. And if you need to um, manage some other health conditions, make sure you just know um, what health conditions are and how they impact you. And if, like me, you're still learning a little bit, just make sure you take plenty of water um, that maybe you might want to take a little fan or something just to make sure that you're able to um, cool down a little bit more. You might want to decide um, to change your actual adventure in the first place. You might decide perhaps a 20 mile hike across exposed <laughs> area with no sunshade is probably not a good idea if if you've got health conditions like I have. Um, you know, there is a bit of planning you can do in the first place to avoid getting into that situation. But I am hoping to enjoy the sunshine in the next few days. Um, but you will be seeing with me, seeing with me? You will be seeing me in this hat and probably with a few other things um, to help make sure that I'm kept safe. Stay safe, everybody, and see you tomorrow.